Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Chingo Chats. We just recorded an hour and 40 minute long episode of Red Pill Tamales. If you like that political talk, please go check that out. It has its own RSS feed. Uh, but I'm your boy Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. What up, everybody? In the building, in the burr, building. Burr, burr. I have no idea what we're going to talk about today. Well, I wanted to talk about, we kind of touched about, uh, on it on uh, RBT, but that SNL little uh, back and forth with Michael Che and uh, oh, yeah. Tim Dillon. You know, a lot of people say that once you become a successful comedian or those that want to aspire to be one, the goal was SNL. Was the goal SNL for you? Did you like that type? Of, like, I mean, I'm sure you liked it, but did you want to be on SNL one day when you were a young? I mean, yeah, at one point it was kind of like, could I try out for that? Like, yeah. Do I have what it takes? You know, um, I mean, back in the day, SNL, that was a thing. You know, when, when you thought of sketch shows. You definitely had In Living Color. I know that one probably was like before your time, but uh, In Living Color was like, I guess, the more urban sketch show. Yeah. To where like, it'd be like, that's the shit we watch. And I have a cousin that has the VHSs recorded, so I've seen, you know, a lot of the the old classics. Yeah. And it was great. It's fantastic show. I wish you could still do shit like that today. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, not these days. They'll call you the black face of white supremacy. Yeah. And I guess Michael Che doesn't have a Twitter because of, I mean, I guess he can't yeah. maybe. Works for NBC, right? Mm -hmm. I guess that's a rule. But uh, did you see the screenshot that he his like rebuttal to Tim Dillon or somebody? The one where he said, "Don't get fresh, Tim." Or yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like he's like, "Tim means well, but he didn't make it in stand up." Yeah, well, he goes, I'm, "I don't care if Tim makes it because somebody said he makes 190k a month on Patreon." And somebody said, "I don't care if he makes," or he said, uh, "Michael Che, I don't care if he makes a zillion. I know Tim Dillon, and he ain't what you think he is. He's a sweet, humble guy who really tried who really tried at stand up but got nowhere." Uh, became a media personality because it's much easier and we all know uh, and we're all very happy for him don't get fresh tim bro uh the average i mean look i'll put it to you like this bro i've been in this game about 20 years and i would much much rather be in tim Dillon's shoes than michael shea's shoes sure. i don't want to be wearing a little suit sitting behind a desk when they've been slaving you all week they got them writers rooms and shit they they uh everybody got a pitch to uh lauren michaels and, and your sketch gets cut and uh, yours makes it now they got to build a set and then now you got to rehearse and i'm gonna tell you who the host is like the special celebrity guest or whatever now all y'all got to write and pitch sketches for for this person and it's like don't nobody want to do that. You're not even allowed to have a Twitter. Like, T Tim Dillon is his own boss. He's free. He's independent. You know what I'm saying? Like, Lorne Michaels could fire Michael Shea and replace him with whoever. Hey, so, Tim's rebuttal to that was, here's the reality. I sell more tickets than Michael Shea ever has. I don't think he can even use his website because of his job, he put in parentheses. And I built something on my own that he could never do. Shea has done well for himself, or has done well for a drunk who can barely read, and his show sucks, and he knows it. <laughs> That's another thing. It's like, why would you want to be in Michael Shea's shoes? Like, you're on a crappy-ass show that's just hanging on by his last leg. If Trump had Twitter, Trump would right now would be like, it's a very sad display. It used to be a magnificent show. You know, very sad. No longer what it used to be. It's a shell of its old self. NBC should be ashamed. Yeah. It's ridiculous, well, man. Yeah, team Tim Dillon over here. No, for sure. Um, Facts. I mean, that's... As a, as a creative, as an artist... Why wouldn't you want to get paid and be free and be independent and call your own shots and go viral all the time? He's like, Tim Dillon was like, man, y'all sketches don't even be going viral. Don't nobody even watch that shit. Absolutely not. And I, one thing I learned, bro, is that we get, um, what's the word? We get programmed and accustomed to thinking that, you know, if you're on the radio, you know, if you're on TV, if you're on NBC, if you're on SNL, if... If you're this, if you're signed, if that, if you have a, an agent, if you have representation, if, and it's like, they try to tell you that that's winning, that's successful. You know, you're on a TV show. Come on now. We done already learned. We done already learned. Like, really? Oh, it sucks for you, bro. You got to go be on that TV show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you have no freedom. You got to be on that lot. They got to put makeup on your face and you got to hurry up and wait. Yeah, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you much rather be Rogan and, oh, be yeah. like, and be like, I ain't going to no audition? Like, uh, yeah. Do you, when's the last time you sent like a packet or like a video over for an audition or something? Oh, uh, man. 
I can't remember the last time, but it, it might have been maybe like eight months ago or some shit, when, or a year maybe. I can't really remember. Uh, we have this connect out there in Hollywood where they're like, hey, you'd be perfect for this role. Would you like to submit type thing? And it's always a pain in the ass. Yeah. It's always a pain in the ass. It's always like, I got to read this goofy ass shit. I got to memorize this shit. I got to see how I would do it. Now let me get Joe over here. He can read the other lines. He could film me. Now I got to upload this shit. And now they got to send back notes. And it's just, I don't even want to do this. It's like, especially now. It's like, wait, wait, wait. So you're telling me that if I land this role, number one, a lot of times I don't even pay that well. Two, now I got to be sucked into y'all's union or something. Now you're taking all kind of money out my check. Number three, you're going to have to either get me vaxxed or test me every goddamn day. Uh, number four, I got to be in L.A. So I got to deal with all this traffic, all this crime, all these mandates, Governor Newsom and Mayor Garcetti, all to be in some shit that ain't nobody going to watch. <laughs> So when I was in Philly Brown, I was getting more props from my fucking Facebook sketches. Mm. I had more people coming up to me about my Facebook sketches than a movie I was in that was in theaters. Mm. First of all, who, does anyone go to movies still? No, okay. absolutely not. Well, what the fuck is going to happen to those people? Uh, like, um, go straight to HBO. What's going to happen to the movie theater owners? You know what I mean? Like, First of all, let me, let me just show, tell you this. So the other day, Sunday actually, we had to go to the mall. Oh, to get uh, Jimena's uh, ears pierced. Oh, okay. Right? So she was a gangster. They went pop, pop. She was just, ah. And she ain't cry for shit. She was like, ah. She was just annoyed. Like, who do I punch? And did y'all get that bee that stung me? <laughs> uh, all the other parents around like, oh my God, she's going to cry. Oh my God, are y'all nervous? I'm, I'm like, this is Jimena. Jimena with an X. She got a little indigenous name. She a thug. So we went to the mall, right? Baybrook Mall. And um, it was super packed because, you know, it's Texas and people don't give a fuck. COVID is over, bitch. It's been for a while. People here. walking around, raw dog in the air. And uh, this is suburban, like suburban Texas. It's not even Houston, fucking Harris County ass shit. So um, we, we noticed there's like a, a movie theater right there which actually uh the owners are like somewhat related to somebody sold oh wow somehow some way so we were already feeling for them but we're like okay hopefully business has picked back up because this build back better new normal bullshit they're trying to program us and getting us used to just like put the vr on your headset get on the metaverse don't go nowhere don't do shit we're gonna tell you it's bad for the climate anyway so we're looking at all the posters on the uh the like the um it's like a courtyard looking thing right mm -hmm. that this add-on they did and you're looking at all the posters i'm like will smith has a new movie out king richard we're like what the fuck is this and we're looking at all the posters it's like uh is this for real we were like are these really movies or is this like a placeholder it looked like some uh stock photo like who are these a fake photoshop it picture just it was. just <laughs> it seemed like um like if you were going to buy a template for artwork yeah. off of Fiverr, yeah. it's like, we can make you a movie poster like this. That's what it seemed like. Where it's like, who are these people? And then I think one was the dwarf from... Um, Game of Thrones? Yes. I think he's in a movie. And I was just like, okay, either I'm not paying attention to commercials and previews or this fucking new normal shit. Like, it's a new world. They really shook the box... They really shook the box and people's habits, people's um, mentality, everything's changed. Here's a, actors are needed for the Civil War scenes in Will Smith's movie filming in Louisiana. Huh. Okay. What was the movie that you saw? It's King something? It said King Richard. That must mean something else. Huh. But, uh, yeah, nah, man. I, I'd rather podcast. <clears throat> I'd rather podcast. I know I could act. I know I could get jiggy and, um on set but guess what man like i got the i got the skill set you know what i'm saying but i'd rather do stand up because you see the skills on display right there um and some of these um what do you call them instagram comedians like mm -hmm. these social media like i do funny videos like, yeah they try stand up and it's like it's like newsflash you're not that funny even on instagram <laughs> like you already weren't that funny on instagram you overdo it you overdo it with the faces. Like, mm. it's more cringe than funny. But because the algorithm and the brands fuck with you and they let you get the yeah. eyeballs, now you on stage thinking, 
thinking what you did over here is going to work over here. And it's like, no, they're both bad. I will always have a reverence for, for comedians, you know, comedy in general, because it is such a hard thing to do to try to even craft something that you're going to go on top of a, on a stage. Some, some places when you start an open mic, you don't even have a stage. You just fucking walk in front of a crowd of people on just on a regular floor. That's hard. Trying to make people laugh. It's crazy. That's hard. You're not even elevated. Like you got to at least be able to look, you know, kind of downwards at like a crowd. But yes, anyway, yeah, some shit ain't conducive. Not at all. I was at Target last night, which I said I wouldn't go there anymore when they yelled at me about a mask a year ago. But you were back. But I was back. All right. We were looking for a fucking pop socket or something. Don got a new uh, iPhone, the 13. Nice. Amazing. Camera's fucking amazing. Okay. It's like we say this every year or every two years about phones. It just gets better and better. Unbelievable. Uh, Shout out to the people of China <laughs> making our phones. I'm not buying Nike anymore. I can't, I can't do yeah, it with I can't the iPhone. Do it. But Luis and these people that love the shoe heads, like, hey, yeah. I'll, ta- I'll take a gift if you want to give it to me, but like, I'm not buying it. It's like, I won't support. All products that are made with human slavery. Yes, yeah, just some. Just some. Like, just some. just like the, the iPhone phones. or maybe the Xbox Laptops, or whatever. Shit, Laptop. Like mm-hmm. Most of our tech. Taiwan and such. Um, I'm standing there. They have these little kiosks. Now, you know how they have like the regular registers, which it's like people don't even use those anymore. It's like they don't hire workers to, to check you out. It's always self-checkout. It's uh-huh. like, I don't get paid to do this shit, but mm-hmm. you do it because you want to get out faster. Well, now they have these. I don't fuck with that shit. The self-checkout? No. You, you always make somebody else do it? Yes. All right, that's fair. Uh, go on. I'm not trying to go bling, but you know. No, they got these tiny little kiosks where it's like one or two people at each side of the store. And if you have like two or three items, like they check you out. Like if you're paying with card, it's just like click, 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 put it in a bag and then you can go. It's even it's supposed to be quicker than self-checkout. Don's paying for her little pop socket or whatever. And I'm just kind of standing there looking at something on the end cap. And this guy's like, uh, hey, did I just see you at, at Marshall's? And I turn around, I was like, what? He's like, did I just see you at Marshall's? I was like, no. And he's like, oh, man, I saw somebody wearing that exact same Astros 2017 hat. I was like, oh, funny. Yeah, no. And then we started talking about baseball. I was like, yeah, tough year. I was like, yeah, you know, heartbreaker. And I, every time somebody randomly starts talking to me, I'm wondering, like, what, is selling going? You well, yeah, what are you trying to sell yeah, me, yeah. right? And his, hey, man, I got these speakers in the van. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And his girl was with him, and she had, like, a center point thing on. So I thought it was going to be, like, electricity thing or whatever. Hey, so who does your power? Yeah. Exactly. So, But he was really nice, so I just kind of went along with it, and he was like, what do you do? And then I knew something was coming, right? I was like, uh, so I was like, I always make something up. Like I do like a, like a digital media something. I, I said digital media marketing or some shit like that. He goes, oh, I actually do some e-commerce stuff. I was like, okay, uh-huh. And then we started talking about that. And he goes, what, what, who do you, what, what kind of digital content do you do? And he kind of cornered me where I couldn't, usually I have something to come back with. Okay. And I was like, you know, I work with an enter- a local entertainer. I never really give details, right? Okay. And he was like, oh, cool. Anybody we might know? His wife asked, anybody we might know? I was like, you know, Chingo Bling, and she's like, uh, yeah. She was Mexican. He looked Indian, but he turned out to be Mexican. Hello, yeah, and he goes, you work with a mamalo? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, no fucking way, man. I've been a fan since high school. And then we just started talking about your old sketches in Target. And you're like, but he's red-pilled now. And he's like, fuck that guy. I thought about saying that. He goes, yeah, we do a lot of political content, but I didn't fuck say anything. that guy. That. He's not voting for Beto? Yeah, he probably will vote for Beto, but he's like, yeah, they're electrical engineers from A&M that can't really find a job in the industry, so they're doing like e-commerce stuff. It was random. We just started talking about your old sketches, and there's, then there's not a demand for electrical engineers, or maybe they didn't want it. Yeah, it yeah, I don't know. I feel like Houston would be the place to get an electrical engineer job, but uh, but also sounded like they just wanted to skip the rat race. They're like, we want. Mm-hmm. We decided, you know, it just wasn't what we want to do. They're both electrical engineers. Wow. Degrees, and they're like, man, let me get some type of degree like that. Yeah. Um. But apparently, they know a lot about e-commerce. So I was like, all right. He's like, he's like, let's exchange info and just let me know what you got going on. Yeah. So um, it's a skill set for <clears> these days. So I need to go through my inventory and uh, I need to get all this like new freedom type stuff made. So maybe that's when we'll switch over to Shopify. You know what I'm saying? Once I get all the new freedom stuff and I'll be like, all right, here's the inventory. And then all the other stuff, we'll figure that out. Fantastic. But um, what were we talking about right before Target? Um, The mall and shit like that. Yeah, the movies, entertainment, you know, the the reels, so submitting packets and stuff, podcasting versus acting. You got the skills, the cringe TikTokers and Instagrammers. Yeah, like for example, man, some some stand up people, they be up there like laughing at their own joke type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like some there's exceptions. I don't want to give this absolute rule. Yeah, but um, but anyway, um, you yeah, know that it, Michael Che argument too. Not to interrupt you, yeah. where he said something to Tim, where like you're internet funny or you're media funny or you're you're part of the media. You're not a stand up or some shit like that. It's just like uh, uh, going down as a stand up. Yeah, exactly. Not only that, but also. You're part of the media. 
You work for NBC. Yeah, you NBC, boy. And even if he is somebody on social media that has a media presence, presence and obviously is selling theaters around the world, he's going to uh, Australia or New Zealand, or not Australia, but he's going to somewhere like, oh, uh, Dublin, he's doing Tim like... Dillon. Yeah. Okay. So he's selling internationally, and uh, it's just such a dumb thing to poke and say, like, you're funny in this world only, and what it's it, not going to yeah. translate to something else. Here's what it comes down to. What it comes down to is, you're just on TV. This motherfucker's bigger. Yeah. Uh, newsflash, TV ain't always what it is. That's the little carrot on a stick. That's that's just this other um, business model that sells advertising, and 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 sometimes they sacrifice, you know, freedom of expression or creativity or, or different types of views. But just because you on TV, don't get fresh, Michael. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you're you're. It's this fallacy, this false equation of like you got to be on TV. It's like rappers that be like, "Well, I'm on the radio." I know a lot of rappers ain't on the radio that's whooping all y'all asses. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's different now. It's about streams and, and this. And, you know, some people got a cult following. Like, when's the last time Lil Boosie had a radio hit or something? It's like, he don't need one. He don't need one. Like 15 years? He don't need one. Or and, and plus, if you guys go back and watch the Kanye interviews, he's basically saying, like, fuck music. He's like, that's a losing business model. He's like... Anything, if anything, we're all slaves over there. That's not where he got his nine billion from. Part two came out, right? Mm-hmm. Did you watch part of course. two? Of course, of course, of course. How could, I not? how could I not? We spent the whole episode last week talking about that, and, how, and here we are again. How we, was part two compared to part one? What did you extrapolate from it? Let's let's dig in a little bit. Oh, there's a lot, man. I, I want to post on my clips. You know, hopefully people can see them. But um, he was basically saying like, stop calling people crazy just because they don't go with the main narrative, like. Oh, and he gave a list of examples like, I don't like that Drake bar. Oh, you crazy. Or like, what's up with that haircut? Oh, you crazy. It's like, I'm not sold on Biden Harris. Oh, you crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, of course, I had to grab that part. Um, I did a few screen grabs. But he said something about he was talking about like a, like a compound almost of sorts where he would, you know, food and everything you need like and farming in the middle yeah, like farming like city of the future type shit yeah i feel like and i so it, like homesteading came to mind and having like a big compound came to mind but what did you think about whatever that what, whatever point he was trying to make with that well it's that billionaire talk you know what i'm saying it's that like he's a visionary he thinks different and he touched on some of that when he was with rogan i think and um i mean i think overall people pay attention more when you got nine billion when you're in debt 50 million and you're saying, I want to do fashion and y'all are marginalizing me and y'all don't get it. And, you know, all they see is a MAGA hat. It's like, boy, you crazy. You know, come back home. Yay. You're uh, the sunken place. Come and it's like home. you basically like home is the fucking Democrats. <laughs> now, check this out. I think he goes off talking about Ice Cube. He's just like all of a sudden Ice Cube ain't black enough for y'all. He's like he gave y'all Friday. He gave y'all albums he gave y'all nwa he gave y'all all this stuff and all of a sudden y'all try to take away his black card check this out shit already boy y'all just wait till somebody ain't affecting the stock and y'all just take them out one by one to put impose fear on anybody with freedom of thought well, i smack the shit out you when i see don't tell me what the fuck to do ever in your life boy none of y'all hollywood plant ass niggas tell none of us what we do this is our culture now it's up you can't cancel none of us it's up boy and all of y'all scared niggas that's running around doing what these hollywood niggas telling you to do fuck y'all man it's up y'all either is about our culture that we grew up about or you about yourself selfish scared ass house niggas so they cancel the what mm. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be irritated. <laughs> so on that clip, he he's basically because uh, I know it's, it lacks context, but he's basically saying we can't let outsiders dictate who has a voice and who does not. Mm. He says, um, you know, our culture, he's like, we are the culture. We make culture. You can't hijack us. We're not going to let y'all in and come in and say, Dave Chappelle, you cannot speak. Kevin Hart, you cannot speak. Little Boosie, you're deplatformed. Uh, the baby. So there's so many clips like that that I love where he's basically saying, 
We make the culture. The culture is ours. You're no longer allowed to come in here and tell us who can speak, who can't, who can have a different opinion. Like, we don't all have to be Democrat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let, let me play one more. This is my George Bush. Okay. You know why I didn't get canceled then? It's because the people that run the media didn't fuck with George Bush either. They fucked with the Democrats. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. But I recently... <laughs> Uh-huh. And we don't start nothing new. I said, with well, Cube, he said, like, man, what's, what's been happening, been working. He'll meet with Trump, and then they'll cancel him. Man, fuck out of here. Y'all, y'all need to give me the proper, proper fucking, I want to be hung over a motherfucking doorknob and killed, and y'all say that I fucking went crazy and got doped out, but y'all, y'all ain't going to stop fucking with me and stop fucking with Cube and stop fucking with Deja Chappelle and anybody that's black in a position of power that got an opinion. Y'all going to stop fucking with us. Come and get me. My nigga, come and get me. Me. Me, me. I do it. Not, nobody else. Me. Come and get me. I like Trump. Yeah, I said it. I'm rocking with Trump. I'm never voting Democrat till y'all actually do something that changes something. Now, when we come together and vote as a block, like Dr. Claude Anderson said, the Democrats, they're going to be forced to do it. They ain't, they ain't going to just give it to us. China ain't going to just give it to us. They gonna have it to, they'll just show you somebody that look like us and get 94% of the black vote, and we just give it to them. We're just so happy just to see somebody that we think is us. That we think, like, come on, I don't know her daddy or black daddy like that. Y'all ain't do no research on this. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, this is good for your daughters. No, it's not. North ain't finna be rolling with that. And, and if they took me out right after this, bet you North run it after this interview. So, man, you know what I'm saying? Y'all was coming at Cube. Y'all meaning the internet. <laughs> like, y'all was coming at Cube for meeting with... So we can't meet? We can't have a conversation? Y'all stupid motherfuckers? What the fuck is wrong with you? This man Cube is educated. This man was an architect. This man done did movies. Boys and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Friday. Mm-hmm. And this man not allowed to meet with the president? Or he not black no more? Well, I'm not black no more either. Like, they try to take my black... So George Bush don't care about black so, people. Black 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 right? forever. A little bit. Like Obama had beef. I don't, I got, I don't have beef with Obama. He just worked for them people. You get what I'm saying? Mm. He just worked for them, man. He just got a job. We all got a job to do. They do, it wouldn't be challenging in the video game if it wasn't, you know, invisible, black people working for the other side, this and that. Other side meaning not God's side. Mm. Jesus, Jesus! I gotta really go and watch those parts. I know they're long, but they sound really enter- entertaining because if it wasn't for Kanye's ability to just go off like that, it would be really lackluster because there was not a lot of like... He didn't have a lot of fuel for him. He had all the fuel already within him, and he was just like letting him know, like China, this Kamala, her mama, North, this would take yeah, over. Yeah, he said. He said y'all didn't do y'all's research on Kamala. Yeah. He's like, she don't know her black daddy like that. She grew up Indian in Toronto or Montreal, one of those. Talking about, uh, I grew up doing uh, Kwanzaa. You and all your Indian theas in Canada in the 1980s were doing Kwanzaa. So this brand new thing that came out of Oakland or some shit, like in the late 70s, and you're Indian in Canada, and you did Kwanzaa. That's like, I hate people that use the clown emoji for some reason, and it irks me, but it's so appropriate for her. Like, her and this whole fucking stupid administration. I know this is an RBT, but that's a clown yeah. as shit. Yeah. yeah, y'all fell for it. So props to Kanye. Um, you know, I mean, he laid it out right there. He's like... You, first of all, I got really inspired when he was like, You stupid motherfucker. Sounded like it you. It reminded me. Yeah, it sounded I was like, like Is you. it me? I was like, Is that me? Am I, am I high right now? Am I dreaming? Am I, am I, is this a singularity within a singularity within a singularity? And then he, how he said, In the video game, he kept referencing, He's like, This is GTA. He's like, You got these non player. Oh, that's how I look at it too. Yeah. yeah. He says, He says, Of course, you're going to have these, uh, it's almost like bots. Yeah. You know what I mean? The NPCs. He's like, Of course, you're going to have, they'll get, have somebody. He said, he said, of course, there's people that look like us working for the other side. And he just kept saying, I work for God. You know what I mean? I work for Jesus and uh, all that mother frequencies and all that other shit. That's y'all. Yeah, I was telling Sol on, on her lounge. I, I forgot what topic came up. Oh, she, I guess, was listening to it as well. And she brought up like the, you know, the crops and the whole like small community and like having everything there or whatever. But something along that, the lines of as the U.S. goes more into like a where the Dems would love 
like a godless society. Uh-huh. Atheistic, yeah. Even if you're not religious, like I claim to not be, mm-hmm. I can see how dangerous that is. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So you don't have to be religious. You don't even have to be spiritual to see that that direction isn't the best direction for people that want to have kids and families and prosperous futures. It just doesn't really add up. Yeah. And of course, there's like a spectrum, right? Because it's like, do you really want to be Amish, Little House on the Prairie, super conservative, you know, like super Southern Baptist Christian? It's like, no, it's like, you know, but when we do attend, uh, you know, Second Baptist, you know, we have a chance to go. um, It's like, you know, they're building the new, the, uh, the school building and, uh, they had like a, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but like almost like a field day for kids where they had bouncies and, you know, oh that carnival thing, right? Yeah. It was like yeah. a little carnival thing. They had like a little Ferris wheel and brisket sandwiches and, you know, mm-hmm. it's like swings and you got the parents and the kids and, and it's all positive. So, you know, that's a real healthy, in my opinion, that's a good, healthy upbringing. Just like Kanye started his guy, um, his choir, his gospel thing, put out a couple gospel albums, um, you know, really poured himself into that whole endeavor. And then you have the other side of the spectrum where it's like San Francisco, where it's like, you get an abortion, you get an abortion. It's like crime and like this upside down world of like Kenosha can burn, but it's all in the name of Jacob Blake, a fucking sexual assault rapist motherfucker. And then a couple pedophiles get shot and all of a sudden they're the lone survivor fucking heroes in this story. And it's like, whoa, call me old fashioned, but I don't want to have nothing to do with that. That to me seems very godless. Let me come on back up on over here. Like, call us lame in Texas if you want. Like, oh man, they over there. They probably all. And Texas is not a monolith, right? You have little country towns where they might jam some country music and you might see a Trump flag. And, but then you'll see like corrupt ass Harris County Democrat run where crime is out the fucking wazoo. You got these 14 year olds committing crimes. Uh, the cops don't even want to book them because they spend their whole shift booking them and they're out. And the the DA, I met the lady who's going to run against uh, Lena Hidalgo. Word. Yes, I got her card. I met a lot of people at Michael Berry's event. Yeah, let's talk about that. <clears throat> oh man, I had a great time, bro. Um, Did you fly in and go straight there or what? Pretty much. Yes. Okay. It's, been, it's been a lot of that, like ever since Irvine. Like, yeah. Flying in straight to the studio. So flew in from Vegas. Couldn't miss Michael Berry's party. Um, How old is he, by the way? Uh, he might be like 50, maybe. Okay. Um, so um, it's the it was way out in Tomball. It was called like Roadhouse 20, FM 2920 or something like that. So it's way out there in Tomball like a thousand people out there like long lines to get to the bar everywhere right so i'm waiting in one of the lines well first i'm going to pay to get to get in right because michael's busy i'm not finna be like hey man come get me type shit so it's just 25 bucks so um so i'm in line to pay and there was a couple there and they're like oh oh man it's cash only oh honey uh, and i'm just hearing them have the little discussion i pull out a hundred i said this for us three and they're like what oh no 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 no. so anyway i didn't have to pay for them uh i thought i was gonna and then later they see me they're like you're the guy that was gonna pay for us and and all this stuff right so now i'm in line to get a drink now that there's a couple in front of me and uh the the guy's like "Ah, at the risk of offending you are you him you know that type of thing (laughs) and i was like hey what's up he's like dude love the song vamos brandon Thank you for speaking up. Michael speaks highly of you. He's mentioned you on the show. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and it's like, they don't mention me on none of these other fucking radio stations. You know what? I like it over here. You're the enemy to them. I like it over here. Yeah, over there. They trying to, I don't know what the fuck they trying to brainwash kid. They over there promoting, what are they promoting on these rap songs, man? If you were a parent, it's like all kind of pimping and pandering and prostitution and drug dealing and shooting. And it's like. You know what? Kanye's right. It's a negative frequency. <laughs> it's like, that's crash dummy shit. And, and j- not to jump around, because I'm going to go back to the Michael Berry story. But, um, We're such old parents. Uh, Kanye, he even, he even mentioned some things that I think goes over a lot of people's heads. He basically was saying, like, uh, he was like, you have Vivendi. They own Universal and all that. He's like, these are transnational companies who also own liquor they also have stock in prisons like these are the same people that want you to promote black on black violence they want you to promote uh, fuck my baby mama uh pop a plan b pill you know uh, abort 
abort the baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck yeah. that bitch. I'm a skeet. This and this and that. Pop the plan P. And it's like, that's what they're promoting. Anyway, back to the wholesome experience I had at Michael Berry's uh, birthday. Was it at a venue? Yeah, it's called Roadhouse, like 2920 or something okay. like that. Yeah. So you have like a thousand people out there. Um, you have the big stage. They're they're rocking out. There's like a country band up there going hard. The dude with the fiddle, bing, 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 the little it. violin. It was great. And um, so now I'm having a conversation with the couple that was in front of me. Now they're buying me tequila. Um, other people are like saying hello. We're just chopping it up. One dude is like, bro, I was homeless. I moved to Houston. Now we have two pool halls. And uh, and it's like, bro, this, that's the American dream right there. It's like you literally came from nothing and bounced back in a pandemic. And he showed me um, the, this one guy that owns the pool halls. I think they're called bogeys on the north side or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's the owner of that. Oh, cool. And he showed me this little, like, shack. He's like, just so you get an idea of what part of, um, I don't know, it's considered East Texas. It's like by Lufkin. But he's like, just so you can see kind of how I grew up. This is the this is the convenience store in where I grew up. And it's just like a tiny little shack that's falling apart. It, it literally looks like this has to be one of the poorest counties in the state if not the country because it just reminded me of mexico it's like oh shit i've seen stores in mexico better than this shit um <laughs> so like just met a whole bunch of people and everybody was just on the same thing like everybody was just like positive having a good time you know obviously it wasn't anything like the nightclubs i grew up going to it was like you look back and you're like why the fuck right like ain't phew, dangerous you know so positive experience, met a ton of people. Everybody's just business mindset. Everybody's connected. Everybody's networking, um, having a good time, listening to some fucking country music. Next thing you know, I'm up there doing the Vamos Brandon. Yeah. We got, we got the whole crowd, you know, you know, no matter what, I love my freedom. This side, Vamos Brandon. You know what I mean? That's so badass. it was lit. Definitely lit. Um, because we were talking about Michael Berry, let's, uh, this, this was kind of an RPT topic, but I forgot to put it on the notes cause it was kind of pretty new. So we'll kind of touch on it here. Check this, read this headline for us. Oh yeah. Did you read about this? I think Michael Berry was talking about it. Yeah. Cause she, his content was what she was retweeting. Oh wow. All right, here we go. Houston Methodist suspends privileges of doctor following controversial tweets and COVID-19 treatments. Dr. Bowden. Where'd she go? Uh, here, this is what she played. She pinned. I know you don't want to answer this question, but of all the things we talked about, obviously, I don't play chicken with this thing. If somebody's got it, I don't come around me. I don't want to be near you, all that sort of stuff. But of all the things we talked about, it sounds to me like that's the, if you were to rank, that would yeah. be, that I've, would be the number. IV monoclonal antibodies would be my treatment of choice. If you're going to choose one thing, definitely get that. And get it early. That was it, man. I know you don't want to answer. That was it. Thirty seconds. You just talked about monoclonal antibodies. How controversial is that? And that's what she got in trouble for. It, I'd have to go and read the full article, but that's what I was starting to read as I was going through this news to Houston thing. So, so <clears throat> you know how like you sometimes see memes that are very like paranoid, um, conspiracy like like they want you sick. You know, it's like yeah. where it's like the treatment. Is, is where they make their money, not the cure. Yeah. And like, you know, we're following, you know, the, the, all the food is GMO and, and they're poisoning us and there's fluoride in the water. And, the treatment can't be worse than the disease. Yeah, so stuff like that, it's kind of like a grain of salt where it's like, okay, bro, you're kind of oversimplifying stuff. Like right. our, is, is our health, um, what's the word, industry, is it really adverse? Like, I, I, like in other words, is there this kind of conspiracy where like we should be uh, distrustful of some of these entities? But then you see how they treat a doctor over literally just saying monoclonal antibodies. Get it early. Get it early. Make sure you get it early. What you want to take is monoclonal. That's all it took. So imagine how frustrating it, it must be for like a freedom loving American who's just either A, trying to spread the word about some stuff, maybe you're just trying to post some stuff, maybe you're just trying to like start a conversation, maybe you're a little upset about something, CRT. Now you're running the risk. Again, thankfully I'm not white. 
Um, only because now if you're a white person, and you tweet certain shit, they calling it a racist dog whistle. They labeling you all kind of white supremacist, racist type shit. At least with me, they just call me a sellout. So she tweeted, this is an hour ago, uh, Dr. Bowden, this is being reported about her, Dr. Bowden resigned her hospital privileges instead of allowing Houston Methodist Hospital to continue to smear her reputation over max vaccine mandates and ivermectin. And there's a letter attached from uh, from her, and that was part one of two. Part two is, quote, I'm not worried about Methodist. It's not going to hurt me in terms of patient care. I only needed it, I guess the privileges, uh, just in case I had a patient, had to, put, had to put a patient in the hospital, but I haven't had to put anybody in hospitals. Well, maybe because uh, monoclonal, monoclonal antibodies So works. does she work at Methodist Hospital? Uh, she is. Or she's part of a Houston Methodist, like. She might be part of the medical group, huh? Like system, right? It does, yeah, it doesn't specify so in clinics. her bio or anything. So, so that to me, man, that's going to be a blemish on Houston Methodist because think about it. Well, they were also the first to jump to that, you know, hundred employees or more, get everybody jab or job and not good. Yeah. These are big corporation entities. These are big business. So when you're sick or somebody in your family's sick or there's something going on, you trust the doctors in the hospitals. You want to take them to get good care because they, they're the experts, right? They're going to have the information, make sure you're good. But then you hear these stories where it's like, yeah, they're here to help you. But in case one of the doctors doesn't fall in line with the main thing that they're pushing, right? The Pope. Now, all of a sudden, they try to smear you where it's almost like it's almost like, oh, don't listen to this bitch. She's a crazy doctor. 86% of COVID ICU admissions over the past 21 days have been fully vaccinated. Patients and their families are frustrated and don't understand why they're so sick. I suspect some people are waking up. She tweeted that? She, retwe- she, retweeted, she retweeted that. What was, she, what was the account she retweeted? Uh, an RN, a nurse. Jen RN. So, yeah, man. I think time will tell where either doctors like Dr. Bowden, 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 yeah. Bowden will be vindicated and people will be like, wow, that's very unfortunate that uh, these big medical businesses were choosing sides trying to silence people smear people yeah uh take away their privileges you know and 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 what good is that gonna do it just creates more distrust more distrust yep more distrust but maybe that's a good thing like this type of shit kanye was saying which is like he was mentioning the dr sebi diet which i don't even know what all that is like cmos and you know everything is inflammation or uh i think he talks a lot about like mucus in the body and all this type of stuff but like how Kanye was saying how to, you know, how we can try to be as off the grid as possible. And he was saying that electricity and society would have been free by now if uh, Nikolai Tesla would have had a chance to develop his ideas, mm-hmm. which were you could tap in and get a- electricity through the air and shit and you won't have a center point trying to tax you. Yeah. And uh, he said uh, he said at the time they did a uh, misinf- Well, they did propaganda against Tesla I think he said it was Ed- Thomas Edison. Yep. Mm-hmm. That Thomas Edison like ran the play. I guess he owned a lot of the media. God, man, I need to reread that. I used to love that theory. The whole Thomas Edison and invading, inventing the light bulb and electricity and Nikola Tesla. I used to know a lot about that, but I forgot all that shit. Like supposedly Edison owned a lot of the media at mm-hmm. the time or something, uh, which was what? Newspapers? Yeah, this was around the uh, William Randolph Hearst times as well. That, like The news publications, I think. Who is that? William Randolph Hearst. The guy that owned, uh, he's, he's, he's the guy that's credited for all the propaganda about marijuana and, and all that shit. It was like newspapers. I forgot where when the lineage. When they hated on weed. Yeah, all the lineage of families that owned media and newspapers or whatever. But I, I got to go back and read that shit. It's, it's interesting. Well, because it applies to today. So you might have had someone who is in the cotton industry and they have money to lobby. Mm-hmm. And now they've uh, did a little bit of propaganda on, on weed and called it marijuana. You know what I mean? Because the hemp fibers were showing to be stronger than canvas, you know, stronger than certain papers, durable, just so many yeah. pros to they it. They were strong. They used to make car panels out of them. Car panels? Yeah. The, 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 hemp, the, the hemp panels for cars were stronger than what they were using at the time. Uh, I guess aluminum or steel maybe, maybe or some and shit. And they had to hate on them. They had yeah. to put the kibosh on it. I actually got to find that real quick. Uh, but yeah, dude. So to sum up, so real quick, you, you flew in, you had a good time with Michael Berry's. Yeah. You all shot some video or yeah, how, they took footage. Together? So we ran the song a couple times. They got crowd shots. They got shots of me. And a uh, shout out to uh, Chance McLean of Heritage Films. He's uh, He's putting it all together. So I might get with him 
to shoot some more like b-roll or performance shots or something so i i really don't know if this is just going to be like a little snippet for mm -hmm. now like a little one minute clip of some sort but um i definitely want to flesh it out because it's been way too long since i've shot like an actual like little music video of some sort it's been a minute yeah and um you know that's that's i mean that falls under like the long list of things that we want to do um and again the most consistent thing we've done is podcasting hell yeah most consistent thing we've done please spread the word um it saved my ass when it came to touring because every, a lot of the people coming to the shows are like i heard it on the podcast i haven't been seeing your posts I heard it on the podcast. We're That's how here. it starts, man. And so many people are like, yo, I'm a member of the Thea. Yo, RPT. Or I'll hand them a sticker and say, hey, man, check out my podcast. They're like, oh, I already do. One dude, shout out to this cat in Vegas. One dude, he says he works for like a, a pest control company or he has a pest control company. And he's like, I always listen early. He's like, I get to my first account. I forget uh, one, uh, one of his clients or whatever, like 5 a, 5 a.m. And I don't know what happened that day, but I was refreshing. I was refreshing. He's like, because I wanted to listen while I did my thing. And he's like, I don't know what happened that day. I think it went up late. And uh, <laughs> But it just stood out to me because I was like, okay, damn. You know, it's good to meet people who listen and know a little bit about like, you know, I work at a pest control thing. Yeah. This is the time I tune in. He's like, y'all drop on these days. And I was there refreshing. Dude, it's so funny because it did go up late on Wednesday, the day before you were in Vegas, because my computer decided to just uh, update in the middle of uh, uploading it. And this is, it's usually up by one in the morning. So it's up like midnight, one in the morning on drop days, Wednesdays and Fridays, Mondays, Thursdays. It's always usually up by one to 2 a.m. And uh, I was so mad because I had to do it first thing in the morning. So yeah, I woke yeah. up and... Well, that's that's probably the day. Yeah. That's probably the that's day. That's hilarious. He said he worked at a... I Shout out to you, man. He snitched. I would have <laughs> never knew. Yeah, I would have never knew. Fucking but, windows. But uh, yeah, he, he's got the pest control thing. and uh, But yeah, so, you know, I've been, I've been saying... I don't know if y'all been listening. I've been saying like, man, I don't want to tour as much. I just want to hit my big markets because it don't make no sense like... You're doing all this traveling for one show mm -hmm. on a Thursday or something. It's like, that don't make no fucking sense. I know I could do a whole weekend if y'all let me. Um, so I'm looking at the touring thing as, as just almost like missionary work. Where it's like, in other words, it's like, okay, let's try to pull as many people as we can so that we can tell them about the podcast and the newsletter and everything else we're trying to do moving forward. Excuse me. So in the case of natural fiber composites, polymers and mixed with fibers to, are mixed to, uh, with fibers to strengthen them. The most famous example of fiberglass yet hemp composites are nothing new since Henry Ford used them during the 1940s to design and build cars made of almost entirely hemp plastic. BMW, Mercedes, Audi, Volkswagen use them today for door panels, uh, dashboards and interior components today. Yeah. But yeah, man, uh, they used to use them for car parts, car panels. So it's an amazing uh, plant. So, so yeah, so think about it. It's like sometimes what's best for you and society isn't going to be allowed or accepted due to propaganda, mm -hmm. spin, other other forces at work like lobbyists, uh, PR scandals. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and it goes back to like they called Kanye crazy. They trying to call Tim Dillon, whatever the fuck they trying to call him. Uh, Dave Portnoy, they trying to label him a, of something, some kind of sexual deviant. And it's like, y'all just threatened by anybody that's independent. They got something to say. And that's why, you know, that's why I really enjoyed the Kanye interview because he just kept pushing like individual free thought. Like we're allowed to have a fucking opinion. Stop trying to cancel every goddamn body. Uh, you know. Hey. like the baby he's got himself in some more hot water he does yeah it's like man dave Chappelle just went to bat for you talking Damn. about don't abort the baby and now he's over here having domestic disputes and that's shit. funny hey dude i gotta i gotta throw you something out of left field here all right. all right maybe the last one of the last things we talk about have you seen this video whoa what's happening here okay all right give me a second let me cue this fucking sound up okay i gotta what find the singer's name on What? <gasps> is that P? Is she pissing on the dude? 
Are you fucking kidding? Bro, you can't put this shit on YouTube. I think I heard a shot. And then he's getting crunk on the ground. <laughs> okay. I need some context. <laughs> they were just at a live show and this chick just started pissing on the dude. So I need to see the part where the dude got invited on stage, volunteered for stage. Did she say, who wants me to piss on him? I have no idea, man, but it's making its rounds. I saw it last night, late last night, and uh, I just had to bring it up today. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if you can put that on YouTube, brother. Uh, yeah, no, no, that's just that'll be for us to see. We're reacting to it, but uh, you know, blur it out, whatever. I saw, I saw Schultz has already reacted to it. To w- to which the to that video, yeah. Oh my god, he just put it up an hour ago. Oh wow, oh man. Um, you, you ever seen anything that crazy on at a live event? Hell no. I don't Not be, yours, but like no. I mean, I don't be going to stuff where anything like that will be happening. Uh, brass against. Singer pees on fans' face during festival set. Brass against. Yeah, there probably won't be no backlash to, to that person. It's like, yes, yeah, she's sticking it to the patriarchy. It's like the left is kind of like, how do we analyze this? And they might defend her at first, and then they find out that she like tweeted some shit that was like pro-Trump or anti-vax. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's like, she's racist. Dude, that's... Yeah, so... um. That's the world we live in. Uh, in the comments on the Patreon, Matthew Carter asked, he said, I have a question. I'd like to know how much experience with lowriders Chingo has. Maybe recommend a good shop in Houston? I know nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. Hit up Log G. Yeah, he might know. He's yeah, a Log, mechanic. Log G has the shop, so he might know. I, I know nothing about... I mean, I know somebody that does vehicle wraps and stuff like that, but I can't... I can't say off the top of my head. I'm like, you need some candy paint. It'd be one of those things that I, like, I have to ask my dad. Like, Apa, ¿quién hace upholstery? You know, ¿alguien que hace los switches? Los switches. Hitting switches. We do have questions, I think, in the Patreon, right? Yeah, a lot of them are political. Oh, uh, okay. We'll, we'll save them for, um, for Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Bu- 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 Anyway, sorry, got an email. I was fucking distracted. Um, all right, man. So you have one more show, and then the plan is, as everybody has heard, is to double down on podcasting, create more content. Uh, you and I record some videos, which I'll send you the final versions of them. We'll post them, you know, kind of drip them out, have some fun content that's outside of the podcast and outside of political talk. Uh, I think you and Frank did something right or working on mm-hmm. videos. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What are you most excited about? Let's end with that. What are you most excited about when it comes to the tour? This 2021 tour, it's had all kinds of different turbulences because of shadow banning and just what it is. How do you feel? Blue states. Blue states. How do I feel about 2021 touring? Ending. Ending. Well, in a way, I'm glad, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like, I'm just trying to prepare myself mentally to, to, to be like, hey, dude, stick to the plan. And figure out all the ways you could work from home and don't panic and be like, I got to get back on the road. You know what I'm saying? Because it's almost like it's like you, you're going to have to uh, stay firm and like steadfast in in the idea that you're going to have to find all the different ways to work from home, whether it's like podcast sponsor, maybe some ads, you know turn this house into airbnb mm-hmm. you know we move somewhere else, turn this into Airbnb, get that hustle going I mean. Because what what makes me a little nervous is like, so what's your business plan? It's like, I'm going to make some content and I'm going to do this. And then I'm gonna, hopefully people buy a shirt off that. And then I'm going to make a skit. And then hopefully they buy a ticket. And, and it's like, okay, what happens when you're shadow banned and no one sees the skit? You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. like, well, then I wasted that day when I could have been doing something else, you know, useful to provide for my family. Instead of like putting out stuff on the internet, you know, on a brand new YouTube channel that like a lot of people don't even know I have. Uh, where subscription is free, but people don't click the fucking subscribe button. Um, so yeah, so basically, man, I want to get it like all this stuff we're doing from home, all this like multimedia stuff. I got to turn it up, crank up the heat. I got to get my Michael Berry on in terms of like, you know, solid audience. Obviously, he didn't build that overnight. Loyal audience. You know, they got your back. They're tuning in. They're spreading the word. Uh, you're a doctor. You retweet it. You're in trouble now. Yeah, um, crazy. Which it, she tweeted a clip of her on his show. Yeah. <sighs> Fucking. Um, anyway, um, that's the dream, man. It's, the dream is be more Tim Dillon, not Michael Shea. More Tim Dillon, not Michael Shea. That needs to be a shirt. 
you know more tim dylan more tim dylan not michael shea we're not trying to audition for fucking uh lauren michaels and nbc no to say lame shit we should do a more cowbell rendition parody but it's more tim dylan because it's an snl reference first of all have we covered pete davidson as joe rogan and then the fucking big bird have we did we talk we did not this old trash ass skit i was gonna kind of go into it because that's what that's what that's why Tim made that tweet. It wasn't that, you know... Yeah, well, he was like, SNL fell off. They're yeah. washed. That was the main thing, because they were covering the fucking ivermectin thing. Pete Davidson didn't even try to make any kind of a Rogan impression, which I love Tim Dillon's impression of. It's so preposterous, where he just talks really high-pitched. It's like, come on, man. Yeah, man. First of all, bro, like Kanye said, he said, you know what's worse than being canceled? Being washed. It basically, like, you fell off. You're not relevant, right? Mm-hmm. So... Are you saying that after Ariana Grande, Pete Davidson wasn't really that on anymore? <laughs> Well, he's with Kim Kardashian now. Oh, is he? Pretty much. That's what I've been hearing. Uh, so yeah, Kanye, take care of that. Get to the bottom of that. But but anyway, it's almost like it's almost like they're trying to deep platform us, the independent voices, mm-hmm. right? But the reality is, y'all are washed. So if anything, we have the power. We're the culture. Y'all are washed. Meaning, don't nobody even. I mean. Somebody please let me know in the comments. Do you watch SNL on a regular? Do you tune in on a Saturday night? Like, yes or no, sometimes, only when they have a good musical guest. Like, let me know something. Because maybe I'm out of touch, and maybe I don't know what's going on. But to me, people don't watch that shit. Um, somebody please inform me. But um, first of all, I don't know if I missed part of the skit, but I, I'm pretty sure I saw the beginning because it's like, um, you see Big Bird and he, he's there and then all of a sudden uh, Pete Davidson as motherfucking Rogan walks into the scene chewing on something, which I guess was supposed to be like ivermectin horse stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And first of all, they should have got somebody short and they should have put like a little muscle suit on him, like my El Mamado mm-hmm. thing. That's what they should have did. Instead, you got tall, skinny Uncle Lurch, uh, Pete Davidson with his black emo nails. This boy got black fingernails. I didn't even notice that. Trying to be Joe Rogan. He could have at least rolled up his sleeves, you know, to be tattooed. Like Anything. Yeah. He didn't even try. It's almost like, bro, I know some of my impressions are like half-assed and rushed. Or some of my characters might be half-assed and rushed. But like, that was half-assed and rushed. And it's like, Rogan is a character in a lot of ways. To where it's like... There were some angles. There's something you could have done or gotten somebody else. But uh, they were still trying to push the horse goo narrative, which is like, bro, that's played out. We already know. It's like y'all trying to paint this narrative that all y'all think the way Jimmy Kimmel thinks and Seth Meyers think and that the rest of the country is all crazy. What the fuck is that noise? Is that a helicopter? Yeah, sure is. Man, I thought this for the movie is for the movie getting scary. <laughs> There he is. You were talking about monoclonal antibodies. Oh, my God. Cut off their Wi-Fi. (laughs) The lights go out. Smoke bomb. (laughs) Insurrectionist. Um, He's got an erection. What? He incited an erection. (laughs) Um, So, anyway, I could not wrap my brain around that sketch. I was like, how did this even get approved? And and I I saw someone, it might have been Tim Dillon, that said, like, they literally just showing y'all they're just propagandists for the left. Yeah. And they're just still trying to double down on behalf of Pfizer or Fauci or the CDC or the Biden administration. For whatever reason, they still want to pick on Rogan as if he ain't cool, as if he ain't on the cutting edge of fucking data and science. Newsflash, we believe him more than we believe y'all. News fucking flash. There's a lot more independent voices. Y'all can't shut us all up. And uh, so the sketch looked really lame. You got Big Bird pushing the jab on kids. You got the Pete Davidson. He don't even act like Rogan, look like Rogan. They're still pushing the the horse pill narrative. I didn't get it. Yeah, I didn't get it either. And it was the whole thing was about Cruz, wasn't it? It was Cruz supposed Street. to be about Ted, Ted Cruz because he tweeted some about Big Bird. Yeah. And they and all, what do they have on Ted Cruz? He went to Cancun while Texas was frozen over. That's it. That's the That's most your, recent relevant thing I guess he got on him. Cause. He's Cuban, he's Republican, and y'all can't find nothing. Like he's from Texas, so they try of course they throw us under the bus. Like they're all they're all like against abortion and stuff. You know what I mean? 
They're all backward <laughs> Trump supporters. I can't wait. And we talked about this in RPT, and I guess we'll end with this, but I can't wait for your boy Beto to hit that campaign trail because it's going to be the best, one of the best things to happen to the podcast because it's going to be so much gold. He's gold, gonna, Jerry, gold. Uh, yeah, I can't wait till they ask him, like, so, Beto, it's almost as if, like, I know he probably ain't got time to come on our, our show, but it's one of those where it's like, we would love to have him on the show. Just to be like, so, man, critical race theory, how you feel about it? Well, you know, it's it's a good thing. You know, it's good because it teaches kids to be racist and, you know, 1619 Project and it's Marxist and it's anti-American and it's divisive. It's like, at least come out and say that. At least tell us you're a Marxist and that that's your goal. You know, Beto, what's up with the border? Well, you know, no human is illegal. This is stolen land and immigrants are who we are. It makes us better and it's opened it all up. Okay, what about all the MS-13, the rapists and the fencing on, the human trafficking and the child trafficking and the Haitians and the Afghanis and everybody else and we in a pandemic and our economy shaky? What do you guys say about that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill. Red pill. Tamales. Tamales. We're trying to hit a goal, y'all. Yeah. How loud is for the end of the year? Yes. Yo, y'all have a, uh, I'm, I'm, we'll talk to you before Thanksgiving. But uh, again, chime in, drop a comment, spread the word. If you like what we're doing, tell a friend. Se cuidan, se la lavan y se toman el agua. Peace.